Oh, good evening, gentlemen. I've uh, I've been trying to drink a little less, but uh, some days you just can't help it. So, um, welcome back to the old computer shack. Let's talk about uh, Daniel Lawrence's D and D a little more this fine evening, uh, specifically about uh, the dungeons that are included with the different versions of the game and how they're the same and how they're different. Uh, so, um, but first, uh, a couple of corrections um, from the last video. In the last video, I had stated that um, I had gotten the, uh, well, I got the source code for the VMS version. Uh, it was, it was well, I didn't get it. Someone else got it and I got it from him. But it was originally contributed um, by uh, Chuck Craner that did um, the Unix port of D&D. &D. Um, but uh, I was under the impression, I don't remember if I said in the previous video or not, but I was under the impression that um, I also got the data files from that distribution, but that's not actually the case. Um, the VMS data files that I have are uh, from this supposedly 1.0 version um, of VMS D and D. It's supposedly um, it's it's supposedly later than these um, RX11 disk images that I've got um, for very early versions that only have one dungeon. Um, but it's supposedly earlier than the 3.0 version uh, that was um, contributed by Mr. Cranor. Now. Um, I think that may not be correct um, because this VMS version that we're calling 1.0 in the Subversion repository actually has the same five dungeons as the PC version of the game. There are some differences um, between the dungeons, um, but uh, the fact that it has all five dungeons included with it would indicate that this version of the game um, came from Deck after Lawrence was there. So um, we've got five. Um, what what should we call them? Um, classic dungeons. There have been other dungeons made for the game by other people, but we've got five. Um, canon dungeons, perhaps. Um, the Telengard dungeon uh, was made by Dan Lawrence when he uh, wrote the game. Um, Sphinx Lair and uh, La Morte were made by some of Dan's school buddies um, while he was in while he was at Purdue, apparently. And uh, the Warren um, was definitely made by deck employees and I assume that the cavern was too. Now, um, if we go down here and look at the uh, dungeons that we extracted from the VMS version here, um, we, we have La Morte, we have this SJK2 dungeon, which is almost exactly the same as the cavern. Um, I assume that uh, Bill Knight renamed the dungeon to something a little more D&D-ish when he ported it to the PC, but these are pretty much exactly the same dungeon here. Um, now note that um, Sphinx Lair is spelled differently between the VMS version and the PC version, and for his history's sake, um, I'm inclined to believe that the uh, this spelling is the correct one, um, because it was the original one. But, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Telengard dungeon is included in both. It's a little bit different, too. The Warren is included in both. Um, I think it's a little bit more finished in the PC version, which would indicate to me that uh, this copy of the VMS version is earlier than what was eventually borrowed by Mr. Knight um, to... Uh, create the PC version, which was apparently the Pascal version anyway, so that makes sense. Now, um, if we look at the Unix port of d and it only included two dungeons. This one called the Squire's Hole, which is almost exactly the same as the Telengard dungeon, 
and this Crestwood dungeon, which is unique. Um, it's only three levels deep. My supposition is that uh, this dungeon was made by Mr. Cranor, um, but I don't know for sure. It's uh, it's it's different than any of the other uh, classical dungeons from the game. So, um, I uh, several years ago, um, I reverse engineered uh, the data files for. Um, the map data files from these various releases of the game, and I wrote some Java code to um, to do that. And we've got a you can look at it in the Subversion repository if you're really curious. The code's actually pretty terrible because the whole point was just to draw maps. Um, it wasn't supposed to be production code of any sort at all. But I've got an abstract uh, decoder class, and then I have. Uh, concrete classes for the different releases of the game. I've got the uh, data files uh, from the various releases here in the uh, in the Java namespace uh, so that I can open it, you know, without hitting the file system. It just makes things a little bit a little bit cleaner as far as Java can be clean. So um, the PC version uh, of the maps were the first ones that I um, reverse engineered, and they're actually uh, very, very simple. Um, the, uh, the dungeons are exactly 8,000 bytes long, and uh, each dungeon level is a 20 by 20 grid of rooms, and each dungeon is 20 levels deep, and it just so happens that um, 20 cubed is 8,000. So we can assume from that that um, each room uh, of the dungeon consumes one byte, and indeed that is the case. Uh, four of those, uh, four of the bits of that byte um, uh, defined the the north and west walls of the room. Let me open up a map here. Uh, everybody knows the first level of Telengard, so we won't be spoily if we look at that. So um, each of these square areas I'm going to be calling a room, right? Uh, I hope that I hope that OBS Studio is recording my mouse. Um, and uh, so yeah, four four bits of each byte that uh, defines a room defines the north and the west walls of that room. So the um, the south and the east walls are actually the north and west walls of the adjoining room. Um, so that makes uh, that makes things a little funny, but you know whatever. And so there there are two bits, uh, two bits for each of the walls. So that's uh, four possible different walls. Uh, zero is open. Uh, one is a closed wall. I think two is a standard doorway like this one down here, and I think three is a secret door like this one right here. Um, right in front of that dragon's lair that always kills the curious new player um, in the first level of Telengard. Thanks, Dan. Um, and then so uh, that's that's two bit two bits two bits. That's four bits. We've got four more bits left uh, for a total of sixteen possible special dungeon features um, that can occupy each. I shouldn't call them rooms, each cell of the map. And uh, let me open, uh, uh, wait a second, let me open the map key here. So um, the actual, what, what, what the, uh, what the, um, what that uh, four bit uh, number actually stands for though, um, differs slightly between uh, the versions. Of course, um, the Unix version being a direct port of the VMS version, uh, they're the same, but there are differences in the PC version. So uh, we have s three different staircases, up, down, and both up and down. Um, you can't have more than one special feature at any particular dungeon cell, so there has to be a special staircase for going both ways. Uh, there's the Excelsior Transporter, which allows you to travel to any other dungeon, the, to the Excelsior Transporter on any other dungeon level, assuming that you have enough money to pay for it. There's a pit 
which if it's dark or you're clumsy will drop you down to the same XY location on the uh, next lower level. There's a teleporter which um, randomly teleports you somewhere else in the dungeon. Um, usually on the same level, but not always on the same level. There is a very hacky uh, bit of basic code that does that that we'll look at sometime. There's magical fountains that will change your experience, hit points and stats, uh, or poison you or heal you if you drink out of them, and there's an algorithm behind that. You can kind of some tell what's going to happen based on the color of the water, but not always. There's a magic altar that is basically does the same things as the fountain um, and a couple of other things. Uh, there's a dragon's lair which uh, just contains a high level dragon and it'll usually be your ass um, unless you're a really high level character. Now um, this is the first one that's different. Um, in the VMS version uh, A aka 10 um, indicates a dragon which is guarding the magical orb of immortality. Uh, so you have to kill the dragon and then it'll let you pick up the orb. Um, but in the PC version of D&D &D, it's just the orb with no dragon. And I assume that would also have applied to the Pascal version of the game uh, since we don't have any source code for it. Um, B is in VMS D&D &D, is the orb by itself the same as A would be in the PC version. Um, but in the PC version, uh, B is a magic mirror, and I am not exactly sure what it does. Sometimes it summons monsters, um, and uh, we don't have the Pascal source code, so I'm not exactly sure how the magic mirror works. We'll have to experiment with it here sometime and try to find out. Uh, C is an elevator, which is kind of like a pit, except you don't have any chance to avoid it. If you step into a cell with an elevator, it immediately uh, transports you to the same XY location on the um, next level up, and if you're already on level 1, it makes you exit the dungeon, um, which heals you and gives you experience based on the amount of gold that you've collected. Uh, D is a dwarven throne, um, which does some various things that we'll look at sometime later. E is like a treasure vault where you have to um, guess a combination and it gives you a bunch of loot. And F is also different between the VMS and the PC versions of the game. In uh, the VMS version of the game, F is solid rock, and if you move into it, you die. Um, even if you teleport into it, you die. I guess that's the risk of stepping into teleporters. But um, in the PC version of D&D, it's a, uh, a genie that seems to just teleport you randomly on the same level. Um, I guess that was to keep you from randomly getting killed. I don't know. The genie basically works the same way as the teleporter. Uh, but of course we don't have the Pascal source code, so there's no way to be absolutely sure. Um, so, uh, that's what we can have in the dungeon. You can see here in the uh, first level of Telengard, uh, a lot of the dungeon features are fairly well represented. We've got a teleporter and a, and a fountain and uh, lots of different stairs. We've got a treasure vault down here somewhere. Yeah, and there are a couple of different teleporters here and there. There's a th dwarven throne right there. There's a pit right here. There's an altar here, and I think there's another one. There are two. Yeah, there's one right through that secret door right there. There's a dragon's lair right here. Here's the Excelsior teleporter. Of course, there is no orb. That's on level 20. Um, oh, wrong bunch of maps. That's on level 20 of Telengard. Uh, I think it's down here in the corner somewhere, isn't it? You have to go through some rooms until you find it. It's like a... Or maybe I'm thinking of Sphinx Lair. Oh, I know the orb's somewhere on level 20. I don't remember for sure. But, fortunately, we can, um, we can find out because uh, this code that generates these maps uh, also generates these diff files that tells us how uh, the dungeons differ in the various versions and um, where various special features are that differ between, I mean, based on those uh, special feature codes that we were talking about just a little bit ago, uh, where they are um, in the different versions. So let's let's look at the diff for Telengard, and we can see that um, there's a little bit of difference. Uh, 
between the PC and the VMS versions. On level 1, there's a difference um, at 3.3. 3. That would be 0.3.3 so right here. So this is the VMS version. Let's see what is there, because I don't remember, in the PC version. 3.3. 3. Oh, okay. So there's a, there's a genie here in this little room in the PC version, um, but there isn't one in the VMS version. So um, we can go through with these diff files and see um, what's different. My guess is that um, these PC data files are a little bit newer than the VMS ones. Um, I guess the dungeons were improved a little bit when um, when the game was ported to Pascal. And there are some minor differences um, between the Unix version of Telengard, which is called Squire's Hole for some reason in the Unix version, and the VMS version. Um, but they're very small differences, I assume, um, and they're both on level 1, I assume that is the result of um, Crane Art changing something or something, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so um, we can look at uh, the differences between uh, other dungeons in the game too. Uh, Telengard is very, very similar um, between the VMS and PC versions of the game. But if we look at something like the Warren, we see a lot of difference between the two. Uh, basically, um, there's a little bit of difference between the PC and the VMS Warrens uh, on levels 4 and 6, but there's a whole bunch of new stuff on level 20 of the Warren, um, which is a little funny. Um, it looks like testing stuff to me. I don't think it's actually supposed to be part of the game. Um, and I thought uh, I could have sworn that somewhere oh, yeah, in uh, in the different um, directories for the different uh, map releases, I've got this info file too, and it also generates uh, this stuff that um, tells you where the start location is and where dungeon features are that are different um, in the different versions. That's where that is. It's not in the diff file. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, right. You can look at those if you're curious. Whatever. So, yeah, we were looking at the Warren. Um, it's a little bit different, but not super different. Um, but there's that level 20 on the PC version of the Warren that's full of just... It, 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 it's, it's, it's not... Well, we, we can look at it. Duh. We've got, we've got maps because uh, I'm stupid and um, drank too much. Um, oh, no, I'm th I must be thinking of Sphinxel area or something. No, that's an actual, like, uh, Honest to God dungeon level at the bottom of the war. And I think, uh, but there's, there's no way to get there um, because the Warren is only six levels deep. Um, and then there's this level 20 of the Warren that has, that has the, the orb on it, in it, it's got a couple of, it's got orbs in two different places. Well, this is the PC version, so the orb's going to be here, and that's going to be a magic mirror right there in the PC version. Um, but in any case, like, weird, right? Um, I guess, oh, you could get there with the Excelsior Transporter, but after you pick up the orb, the Excelsior Transporter quits working, so once you've grabbed the orb, you're stuck in the bottom level of the dungeon forever. Unless you drop the orb, in which case you... Uh, uh, whatever, guys. I, I don't know, deck guys, what you were thinking there. If you're the original author of the game, or of this dungeon, and you're watching this, um, get in touch with me and tell me what the deal is here. All right, Sphinx Lair. Um, blah, blah, blah. Very different. Very, very fucking different. Um between uh, the two different versions of the game. And uh, my recollection is Sphinx Slayer does have an orb in it, right? Not all of the... Not all of the dungeons actually have the orb in them. No, Sphinx Slayer doesn't have the orb in it. Does it? It doesn't appear to. So, yeah... Uh, it's not finished. Oh yeah, it does. It's on. It's on level 17 instead of 20, though. That's interesting. 
Um, I don't think I ever found the orb in that dungeon. Um, my favorite dungeon is Telengard, followed by Sphinx Lair, followed by La Morte. Strangely enough, followed by the Warren, even though it's not done. But it, it's kind of a different style. I think it's interesting. And then the Cavern's just not very interesting, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, um, I digress. Are you still awake and watching? Okay. So let, let's... Big, big differences between... Um, the different uh, versions of Sphinx Lair. I think this is the one that I was thinking of that wasn't done between the two. Let's uh, let's look at the map for level 20 of Sphinx Lair on the PC. No, that's that looks like a reasonably complete dungeon. Let's look at it. Uh, let's look at it in the. Oh, of course it would be finished in the PC version. That's the later. What is wrong with my brain? There is no level 20. Um, in the VMS version of uh, Sphinx Lair, and there are significant differences on level 19 as well. Let's look. Oh, so yeah, level 19 is basically incomplete. Um, the only reason my exporter uh, exported uh, this level of the dungeon, which basically has nothing in it, is because um, somebody, uh, for some reason, deleted these walls along the edge. Uh, so it thought that these rooms were valid because my exporter is stupid. So yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, so there there is no levels 18, 19, or 20 in the VMS version of uh, Sphinx Lair, but it has been finished in the PC version. And, you know, they're pretty empty maps, but, uh, I mean, there's a lot of empty space in them, but uh, look, look at this shit here. What What is going on with that? Just, yeah, so, lots of rooms full of orbs. This is the level that I was thinking of that was weird as fuck. Yeah, that's, that's nonsensical. That would be, um, no, that would be a whole row of mirrors in the PC version. Uh, a whole row of genies in the PC version. Um, another row of genies in the PC version. This is very, very strange. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, Kind of strange. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, what have we not looked at yet? Derp, 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 derp. Oh, uh, let's look at the Warren. Um, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we already looked at the Warren because I'm a dumbass. Uh, La Morte is an interesting enough dungeon. It's not my favorite, but it's, it's interesting enough. Uh, I believe La Morte does have the orb in it. Yes, you can. Uh, you can beat the game. Uh, you can beat the game in La, uh, La Morte. Um, we've got minor differences here. Level one is the most different between the two. I did not remember that. Um, let's look at level one of La Morte, uh, the PC version versus the VMS version. We can uh, page back and forth. Oh, okay, so there's just a, a little area down here. What? Oh, duh. Let's scroll down, then we can... Huh, so that's... That's fascinating. I did not realize that... No, this is the PC version, so that'll be a, that'll be a magic mirror in the PC version. Never mind. <laughs> there's an orb on level one? What? So, yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess somebody at deck um, changed this level a little bit and added this little area here um, to level one. But other than that, uh, minor differences. Very, very minor differences. Whatever. Okay, and the last one that I guess we, we haven't looked at the cavern yet. And the cavern is very different. Um, the cavern, I don't think you can... Yeah. Uh, we need an orb. Yeah, okay, there is an orb in the cavern on level 20, so you can beat the game in the PC version. Um, so levels 19 and 20 and level 5 are extremely different. Let's look at level 5. Uh, level 5, this is the PC version right here. Here's uh, level 5 of the VMS version. Oh, there's a whole section of the dungeon missing. 
right there. So they must have added that later. See, here's, here's another weird... Why why would they make this like this? It's not a it's not a fun looking dungeon. It's like too symmetrical. Maybe eh, anyway. What else did we have? Levels nineteen and twenty. Let's look at the PC version level nineteen. Oh yeah, that level with all the spiral shit in it. I remember that. Um they they look basically the same. What's different here? Ah the D and, uh, the PC version adds a bunch of shit here that you have to fight through to get to the orb in this big room. That's that's what it was. Isn't the orb in this room? Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. I'd forgotten all about that. And uh, level 20 was really different. Uh, I'll bet that there is no level 20 in the VMS version. Basically not. There's one room with a teleporter in it, and according to my understanding of how the teleporter code works, at least in the basic version, that would make the game crash, probably. <laughs> or lock up at any rate. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the different maps. Um, I guess uh, if you're really still interested, I'll come back here. Um, if you're really still interested, we can look at some of the uh, decoder. We started looking at the PC decoder. The, uh, the VMS D&D uh, data files were the next ones that I did, and um, fortunately, um, you know, had had source code for that. So that made it... I don't think I could have done it without the source code. Um, uh, it, because uh, it stored it stores uh, every dungeon location in the VMS version as a, as a 16-bit uh, little Indian... Uh, number um, and Java is big Indian so that was um, fucking me up there for a while uh, but once I, once I figured that out I was able to do some uh, some some um, byte swapping and get the dungeon data into the right order and there's also some kind of um, I don't know if it's a, some kind of marker or checksum value every 512 bytes uh, through the data um, that has to be filtered out, um, and it appears that the VMS version um, writes back to the dungeon data files as you play the game, um, and keeps track of where the monsters and treasures are, because it uses these um, virtual arrays, which apparently act the same as memory mapped files in Unix, I think. I don't know anything about uh, VMS Basic, but that appears to be the case. So, um, that, uh, and there's also multiplayer stuff, like not network multiplayer, but apparently, um, players on the same time sharing system, um, in the VMS version could, um, like, interact a little bit in the dungeon or something like that. I, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but that must be something that changed later. I don't know. It hurts my head enough trying to figure out the mechanics, much less the multiplayer stuff that I'm not interested in. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, and then there is the uh, dub, 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 the Unix version, um, which is basically the same as the PC version. Um, other than uh, a header at the beginning. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the skinny for the map data in different versions of Daniel Lawrence's D&D. &D. If you're still awake now, I congratulate you on... Um, I guess you just don't have anything better to do. I, I know the feeling. Um, but, you know, thanks for sticking around this long. I opened my tasty beverage at the beginning and never even took a sip of it past the first one. How silly can you be? All right. Uh, next time, I guess we'll talk about monsters if I get that far. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about um, how I would like to do the map data in our re-implementation, but I'm, I'm going to save that for later. 
this has gone long enough. All right. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Have a lovely evening.